Lithuanica is the aircraft which Darius and Gurenis piloted in 1933 to try and fly from New York to Canis. Back at school, I took part in the contest dedicated to the Lithuanica plane bench models, where I took first place and second place with two models. This is an approximate story about Lithuanica. In 1919, a certain American rich man named Raymond Ortigue offered a prize of $25,000 to anyone who would fly from New York to Paris. In 1927, Charles Lindbergh was gloriously awarded this prize. Staying in Paris at the same time, pilot Stepanos Darius watched the way Lindbergh was received and honored. Having moved to America, Stepanos met another emigrant called Stanley Gerskis. The newly made friends decided it would also be impressive to fly the plane to the places from which they had previously emigrated. In 1931, the American pilots Russell Boardman and John Polando made a non-stop 8,000 kilometers flight from New York to Istanbul on the Balanka CH-300 aircraft. The distance to Canis was 1,000 kilometers shorter, so the two Lithuanian natives started a mail traffic project. However, it's one thing to make a sports record and quite another to promise traffic covering such a distance. Steponis Darius, just in case, I have to say that Darius is his surname, and Stanley Griskis, who had changed his name to a more Lithuanian-like one, Stasis Gerenas, bought the already known Belanka aircraft. They thought to call it Dictatoris, but agreed on the Lithuanica version. The patriotic crowdfunding allowed collecting enough money to get the flight ready. In 1933, having flown 6,400 kilometers, the plane crashed, failing to cover the final 600 kilometers to Canis. The pilots died and the commercial project was ruined. As a result, one thing had become clear. To secure investments and achieve notable success, one had to move to America first. When I took part in the flying models competitions, the jury awarded zero points to the ones who could not land the aircraft safely. Now, when I drive to the capital airport along the street named after Darius and Gerenis, I comprehend that safe landing is not guaranteed. This is not the end of the story, though. In 1934, American Lithuanians bought a larger Lockhead Vega plane and named it Lithuanica II. That was the airplane which Amelia Earhart used to become the first woman ever to fly alone to cross the Atlantic Ocean two years earlier. Joseph James, an experienced pilot, was chosen to fly to Lithuania, but he didn't want to change his name to the Lithuanian-like Jozas Janoshauskas. So, his place was taken by a less experienced American pilot called Elixas Vayukas. In 1935, the plane flew to Lithuania, but having flown 5,000 kilometers, it made an emergency landing. When the surviving pilot got to Lithuania, he was given a solemn reception. When he was greeted on stage, there were so many people who wanted to toot their own horn that the stage broke underneath them. However, the pilot didn't give much meaning to his flight, refused a career in Lithuania, and went back to America. The name Lithuanica was repeatedly used in modern Lithuania as well. The Air Lithuanica Airlines, owned by the Vilnius self-government, started flights in 2013 and ceased to exist two years later. Moreover, two satellites, Lithuanica Sat-1 and Lithuanica Sat-2, were launched into orbit as well. If imitation is a feather in the bonnet, then there were obvious problems with specialists in expert environment. In 1919, Raymond Ortigue offered a large prize to the winner and, consequently, the result was achieved. Nowadays, many projects receive funding from taxes. Thanks to European funds, creative accountants just ensure employment for less expensive experts. If taxpayers' money is given to private companies, taxpayers should automatically become shareholders of companies like nanoavionics. The nanoavionics company doesn't deal with nanotechnologies. They launch objects into space, which burn in dense atmosphere afterward. It's worth remembering that there are people in Lithuania whose achievements are known all over the world. For example, Jurgis Karas is a multiple European and World Championships winner, a record holder, a test pilot, one of the SU-26, SU-29, SU-31, and Yuka plane designers. Here is Jurgis Karas's quote from his interview. If our sports institutions don't need that Lithuania prestige or victories, why then would I need this? Lithuanica's transatlantic flight organizer. Steponis Darius was a Lithuanian-born American citizen. He took part in the First World War. In Chicago, he joined a nationalist organization where he recruited soldiers for the Lithuanian state. In 1920, he returned to Lithuania and joined the military school. While in the army, he learned to become an artilleryman and then a pilot. In 1923, Darius became one of the organizers of Operation Executed to seize Klaipeda region by Lithuania.
Pretending to be locals, the militants killed the French military men and seized power. The French, the British and the Italians threatened with military intervention but did nothing. Lithuania denied that its military units participated in this operation. It was a military action similar to the occupation of Crimea by Russia in 2014. On April 1, 1927, Darius obtained the rank of captain. Three days later, he took a leave to visit his relatives in America and received $4,000 as a payment for taking part in the World War. In the USA, he received a pilot license, borrowed money from his sister, and bought the Waco 3511 plane for $3,000. He started earning providing air transfer services, however, he soon sold the plane. In September 1927, he participated in an air race on a borrowed plane but damaged it during the emergency landing. In 1928, he founded a joint stock company called South Bend Airways Inc. with his partner Giordano. Investing $2,800, they bought the plane Pheasant. Soon, Darius crashed that plane but managed to survive. On June 4, 1928, Darius was invited to some celebration to perform aerial acrobatics. Darius borrowed a plane and flew it with his mechanic. The plane caught the telephone pole and fell into the crowd. The pilots survived. Darius persuaded his brother-in-law Nashlin to buy a plane and pay for the preparation to perform a joint flight across the Atlantic. Nashlin's wife discouraged him from taking part in this venture. Darius was preparing to fly to Lithuania with his lieutenant Turksis, but they had no money for this. The Air Club of Lithuanian Emigrants, called the Knights Aviation Club and created by Darius, purchased a training aircraft Eagle Rock for $2,800. During its flight from the cellar, Darius scratched the ground and another $1,000 were necessary to repair the plane. Following the next accident, the Air Club lost its members. Until 1932, Darius earned his living as a hired pilot. The country experienced an economic crisis and a shortage of jobs. The Military Veterans Administration found Darius an invalid and sent him to a sanatorium in Colorado. In 1932, Darius and his assistant Gurenas bought a used Belalka CH-300 aircraft for $3,200 and announced preparations for a flight to Lithuania. In the appeal to their compatriots, they said that the price of the aircraft was $16,000 and asked to donate another $4,000. Starting from that moment, Darius kept a diary, intending to write a book later on. Most of the notes about completed deeds show the project advertising in the mass media, meeting speeches, meeting with officials, rich men, priests, donations, asking for discounts and gifts, entertainment flights with sponsors and airshow guests music and dance parties, gambling. There are some notes about a bribe, a legal claim, and money disputes with partners. Other people and companies provided aircraft technical maintenance ordered by Darius. The project mentioned above was constantly criticized. Bewildered, Darius himself writes that more experienced pilots, for instance Jimmy Mattern, treated him as a dummy. After the re-equipment, the Lithuanica plane had a shifted forward gravity center, got a lateral slope, and the discounted instruments were faulty. The issues were eliminated. The pilots loaded airmail and waited for suitable weather and tailwind for a month. Stacy's Girenis also kept a diary, but it was stolen from the museum back in the 1930s. Historical reference. Canis Airport was built in 1915 by the German army. It was built on territory reclaimed from the Russian Empire, and an independent Lithuania was declared there in 1918. The young country couldn't manage to establish good relations with its neighbors. Before the Second World War, the government received an ultimatum from Poland, then an ultimatum from Germany, then an ultimatum from Russia, and then fled the country. After World War II, the Lithuanian pilot's motherland was already called the USSR. In Lithuania, it's not common to take pride in achievements of the Soviet times. Though the reason is quite understandable, it was a large concentration camp forbidding people to leave for more developed countries.